Hello and welcome to a video on model aircraft design optimization in MATLAB. Um, my name is Connell D'Souza and I work on the student programs team here at the MathWorks. Joining me today, we've got Guillerme who works in our marketing development group. Hello Guillerme, welcome to uh, welcome to this video. Can you, uh, can you tell us a little bit about why you're the expert to talk about model aircraft optimization in MATLAB? Sure, yeah. Hi, Connell. Thanks for having me. Well, two things. One, I work with, uh, especially the simulating products, I work with the aerospace toolbox in the past. But more importantly, I was a student just some years back, and I spent four years in my undergrad degree in uh, student design teams working specifically with model aircraft competitions. I worked in the SAE Aero Design Competition and also in the AVSI Autonomous Aircraft Competition. So I've had a lot of time doing this on the other side, and I know what the experience is like. Awesome, so we've definitely got an expert in the house today. So, okay, so so so, so moving forward, what, what's on the what's on the agenda today? So um, Guillermo is gonna cover some little, a little bit of basics about what optimization is. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about what the design process is for model aircrafts. And when we talk about model aircrafts, we mean um, remote controlled, aero modeling uh, airplanes that have been built by students for competitions like um, SAE Aero, this SAE Aero Design or AIAA Design Will Fly. Um, we're also going to cover some of the benefits of optimization and how it can help you. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a software demonstration with how design optimization works in MATLAB. Um, we're going to talk about this new fixed wing object that we've just introduced into the aerospace toolbox. And then we're going to do a quick software demonstration and then some key takeaways as, um, to, to get you started. So uh, without wasting too much time, Guillermo, take it away. All right. Yeah, let's start with answering the simple question, what is optimization? So I want to start by highlighting the optimization consists of three basic points. Here. Right. So the first one is an objective that we want to minimize and maximize. This is really, you know, what evaluates your performance. It's what you care about. Right. The next thing is we're going to have to be subject to some constraints. So this optimization problem we're solving, uh, there's some constraints on it. There's what we call a solution space that's allowable, and we want to work within right. that, make sure you know we're following the rules, we're making right. things that, that work. And finally, we're going to do all that with respect to some variables. Now, these variables are what define the optimization problem. This is what we're right. optimizing over. They're kind of like knobs, or in this case of this graphic, uh, sort of vertical sliders, sliders yeah, okay. right? That actually control our design, and we're going to be iterating over them. Um, and this is what defines, you know, all, what the objective value actually is. Okay, awesome. Let's talk a little more in detail about how the model aircraft design process works. Right. So the first thing you're going to start with is an initial guess. If you've never designed an aircraft before, you're just going to have to start picking some numbers. If you've done it in the past, you might have some original numbers. You know, let's like say your aircraft from last year. You can start right. there. Uh, once you have your initial guess, then we go to the design parameters, right? Those little knobs. So these are, again, what define your design, and you're going to start there, sort of add numbers to them. Uh, and once you have numbers, you can evaluate the aircraft performance. So you're going to do all your calculations and figure out how your aircraft behaves, what the aerodynamic characteristics are, for example, or how much mass it has. Right. From there, we go to the constraints. So we want to make sure we're not violating any constraints. So we're going to do those calculations, make sure our design is feasible, and after that, we're going to compute an objective, right? So this is what we really care about. And this is what we're going to use to evaluate how good our design is. Um, now, this is, you know, if you do it once, you get a final result. But we sort of initial guess, right? We can probably do right. better. Right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back. This is actually a pretty hard step in this whole process. We're going to go back and, and pick new right. design parameters, reevaluate aircraft performance, check the constraint violations once again, make sure our new design is also feasible. And then we're going to compute another objective, a new objective. And then we compare this new one with the old one. We see which one is better. Right. And we stick with that. And really, we want to do this in a loop, right? We want to keep doing yeah. We call this the design loop. You go so, back. So if, if, I, if I'm getting this right, this seems like a lot of iteration. And the fact that you're starting out from an initial guess means that your, your, your starting point is always not the best. So you you really have to spend, a, it's, it's, it's a pretty manual process, right? This, yes, it's yeah. manual, it's time intensive. Right. Uh, this, you know, and you, you can choose when to stop, but generally you want to keep going for many, right. many iterations because right. you want to do well in the competition, right? right? So actually to handle that, that's why we introduce optimization, right? That's why we're going to optimization with aircraft design and why we use MATLAB specifically to do it. So let's just talk about some of the benefits here, what it brings to the table. Uh, the first one is exactly what we are talking about. So it reduces guesswork. We yeah. don't want to use this initial guess. Uh, so there's guesswork there, but there's also a lot of guesswork uh, when we're going from computing our objective into picking new design parameters, mm. right? I see. If we have like one or two variables, it might be easier to do. 
But once you get a lot of variables, it becomes hard. Right. A optimization problem is actually going to handle a multivariable Multi problem. Yep. Right. You'll see later we're going to look at an aircraft, very simplified aircraft. It still has twelve design variables. Right. And trying right. to you know tune each one of those individually would take you well, know and, so and, much. And then time. The, the other thing is that because they're all variables on the same aircraft, messing around with one of them starts starts a domino effect and affects a bunch of other ones as well. Absolutely. Right. right. That's so exactly I, right. yeah, I can I can only imagine how how hard that would be to do that with a you know with with with, um, with a paper and a pen. Yeah, you spend weeks on right. a big team right. and it, you're still not going to be satisfied with right. the end result, right? Also, what the optimization does here, going to the constraint side, is it's going to automatically account for constraints. Mm -hmm. This is great because when you get an optimized result, you know that your design works. It's feasible right. with you know your constraints. And finally, you're going to get improved performance, right? Eventually, you're going to give up. Like the manual work is, is, is so tedious, it's so repetitive. Right. Eventually, you're going to give up and you're not really going to get you a mathematical optimal, right? right? right. Versus with the optimization. Right. Um, you know, the, we can guarantee the algorithm is going to get you right. like a, an optimal. Right. All right. So let's talk about how this looks like specifically with MATLAB. Now, this is going to be an overview. We're going to look at code later. Right. But let's just do a quick overview of what this looks like. So, again, first step is to define the optimization variables. And here's the aircraft we're going to work with. There's also the definitions for the variables. And it's a very simplified aircraft. Right. This is just a box for the fuselage. But again, this is already enough um, to have 12 variables and be, right. you know, right. fairly tedious to optimize by hand. Right. And, you know, this is just to show you having an idea of what these variables mean that we're going to use later. Now, the next step is to formulate your objective function. And in this case, I sort of alluded to this earlier, we're going to use the flight score uh, equation here. That's what FS stands for. And it's for the SAE, so the Society of Automotive Engineers. Aero design competition, specifically for the regular class aircraft. Right. I believe this is taken from the 2020 to 2021 competition year. And I'm actually I'm actually seeing the vision now because uh, if you if you if you keep the flight score as your objective, you want to maximize that. Like that's that should be the end game, and I, I guess that's what optimization is going to help us with. Right? Gonna exactly. Like, okay. Yeah, we want to. Cool. We want to do well in the competition. Yes. We want to win. So we want to win. Let's so, optimize so, our so, score. So a maximum score wins, right? I like exactly. that. <laughs> All right. Cool. Let's yes, so next step is optimization constraints. And these are going to come from multiple sources. Here's just an example. I'm not going to read this out, but these are some of the restrictions for the ES or design right. class. And then the last step, well, we solve the optimization. Right. On the right, you have what the graph looks like. Uh, I'm going to talk more about this when we get to the code, but you know, eventually we're going to produce a plot like this that's going to give us an optimal value. This is what optimization looks like with MATLAB. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the fixed wing object. Uh, so this is a really useful object that we're going to use. It's really the arrow.fixedWing class from the aerospace toolbox. We're going to use this to model and analyze a fixed wing aircraft. And we're going to do that because it helps us calculate static stability characteristics, Ooh, okay. right? So it's going to produce a, a nice table like this. Also gives us the, the numbers, right? Not just if it's stable or unstable. Right. Um, and this is really useful because calculating static stability is complicated. And there's a lot of different methods. We want to make sure we're doing something that's powerful and right. uh, gives us, you know, good results. I mean, at the end of the day, you want your aircraft to be stable, right? Or it's exactly. or, or your pilot's gonna have a real hard time trying to fly that. You know? That's that's exactly right. <laughs> so we want to make sure it's stable. And actually, to do that, we need to use the static stability parameters as optimization constraints, right? Oh, we need the solver to really know that. Um, you know, our aircraft has to be stable. It has right. to include that in the optimization. Right. So it's really important, as you're saying. Right. We want to make sure our aircraft is stable. So that's it for uh, this part of the presentation. We're going to go to the software now. All right, so let's go and get the example. So I'm here at, you know, the MathWorks documentation page, specifically the examples for the aerospace toolbox. Uh, so here's where you can get a lot of different examples. This one is here as well. Let me scroll down a little bit, and here it is. So once I'm here, you know, I could open this on my desktop on r 2020 b but you know it's just easy if you don't have it installed and so I'm going to open this in Malibu line uh, I just wanted to point out a quick thing so it says that that this example needs the um, aerospace uh, toolbox and the optimization toolbox um, if any of you students out there taking part in a, a, a student competition and you don't have access to these toolboxes uh, I'm going to drop a link in the description below to where you can you can request licenses for your team so you should have access to these tools if needed all right so here's the example um, it starts with some of the things we already talked about right it's going to start with the design objective same equation we're talking about right uh, then it goes on to the optimization constraints so the first three there is the ones I showed in the slide. Another one that I want to highlight, I think important because we mentioned it, is that the aircraft 
must be statically stable. Uh, there's also some assumptions that are going to come in. Again, we want to simplify this design. Right. We don't want to make the right. example too complicated. Right. And yeah, then we're going to formulate the problem. And this is the first function I want to uh, highlight here, which is initialize aircraft. Okay. So let me open that up. All right, so here we are with initialize aircraft. And here we can see how some of the variables are defined. It's really quite simple. We're going to start with the optimvar function, right? So I'm a line 10, I'm saying wing dot half span is this optimization variable. I'm going to give it a name, B underscore W, and then I'm going to give it a lower bound. It's a length, right? So it has to be positive. Right, right. And an upper bound of 1.5. So this comes with one of my requirements from the competition that says that the wingspan cannot be greater than three meters. Three meters so half yeah. span, one and a half yep. meters. And really- so I, I, I can see the reason why you have so much code is because you're essentially, you have like three lines of code setting up each variable, right? Uh, um, and it, it just, because you've got 12 optimization variables, that's, that's, that's a lot of lines of code, right? Exactly. But it seems, it, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't look like complicated code. It's just, you just need to set it up, right? That's right. So okay. this is actually really simple to do. That's the great thing of using what is called a problem-based approach with the uh, optimization toolbox is what we're doing in this example. And then the other, other thing I want to highlight is I'm also setting up an initial value, right? So that's right. like my initial guess that I was talking about earlier. All right, so back to this file. So the first step here is to set up the optimization problem. It's going to be an empty problem, right? There's nothing in it. Or we're going to say, hey, the objective sense is to maximize, right? Again, we right. want to win the competition. We're going to maximize the flight score. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So the first step is to add the aerodynamics. And there's going to be a couple functions like this uh, where I'm adding more information, right? So let's look at add aerodynamics first. Okay, so here we are with add aerodynamics. Now, what all this function is doing is I'm using it to do some calculations on aerodynamic coefficients. I'm using it to uh, estimate uh, drag, for instance. And I'm also defining some constraints. So let's look at what one of these constraints looks like. Okay. So here I have a constraint for the wing aspect ratio. And, you know, this is not a requirement from the competition. It's mostly because I'm using the Prandtl lifting line theory right. to do this. It's not a complicated method, but it sort of requires a minimum aspect ratio to work, mm. physically speaking. Okay. So I set a minimum of six, but you can see it's super simple right. to define constraints right. as well. So it's just design problem dot constraints, and then you set up a, a structure that does that. That seems pretty simple. Exactly. And all of them are going to be set up in those exact same way. Right. So essentially, you'll have you'll have I guess three structures: right? one for constraints, one for variables, and one for um, um, your objective, right? That's exactly right. right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So yeah, let's go back. The next function I really want to highlight is add stability. Okay. So add stability is where I'm going to be incorporating those stability constraints. So let me open that file as well. All right. So here on add stability. Much like a lot of the other files here, it's pretty long, but all I'm doing is I'm adding the equations, right? All the equations from like textbooks. Right. I'm just adding these equations to the problem. All right, so at the end of the file is when I'm actually going to define my constraints. Mm. Uh, before we talk about them, uh, I want to talk about this function here. Uh, it's FCN, so function to optim express. Uh, what this function is doing is generally, you know, under the hood, the optimization algorithm, it uses powerful tools like automatic differentiation, right? But it depends on some uh, supported uh, functionality, supported uh, operations for this to work. Right. However, because I'm using the arrow, you know, fixed wing object, I, I don't really have that. So I have right. to use this function to optimize expression to convert my functions that are not supported into things I can actually use right. uh, with the optimization. It looks more complicated than it is. All it's really doing is I have compute derivatives as another function, right, that I have defined. And I'm giving it as a handle, and then as everything handle, else yeah. is just the, the inputs to the function. And then it's going to return to me the stability derivative right. constraints. Right. And, and then you're, you're, you're just storing the stability derivatives outputs into your constraint structure that you've got over there. That's um, exactly right. So in this, I have 10, and you're right. They're all going into my constraint struct. Um, and this, you know, I, I need to do this to make sure that my aircraft design is going to come out stable. Right, again. right. So, so if, 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 we, if we back up a second and, and we go back to that, that design process that we saw, uh, this is essentially that, that spot where you're saying, okay, is my aircraft stable before I make that next guess, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Next, we're going to uh, define our objective. So as you mentioned earlier, it's very simple as well. You do design problem dot objective. And this is exactly the same equation we had above, just written with the variables we've defined. Right. Right. So very simple. Next step is to set up some options. These are not required. But, you know, they can give you a little more control over right. what the optimization is doing. 
So and this is also something that that you as 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 the audience can play around with and see what works best for 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 your particular design. Exactly. So here, all I'm telling you to do is you know run for as long as you need. But if uh, the difference between you know uh, optimization objectives is you know less than one or ten to the negative four right on every step just you know just just, swap. just assume that it's converged and move forward yeah. exactly okay and then the final step is to solve and this is where we get this final result now we i haven't run this yet we can run this uh right now so the the beautiful thing about uh a live script is not only is it a nice way to present the code it also runs all right so here we have the result it's the you know the same plot we have down there uh, in this case here, because we're using Malibu Online, we actually don't have parallel, but this ran pretty quickly. Uh, and all it's doing here, so let's talk about you know what this plot is showing us. Right. Uh, on the top, we have constraint violations. It's a metric of how bad our design is in terms of our constraints. Right. We want to, of course, have a constraint violation of zero. That's what tells us that our constraints are being met and our design is valid. Uh, so that's what the top plot shows. And in the bottom, it's the function value. Now, you see that it's going negative, and that's just because of the way the optimization solver is set up. Right. Right? We get a, a final flight score of 18.75. Essentially, if, if, you, if, if, you go into, if you go into some of the workspace variables, you'll see the actual values of, of, of different, of different uh, parameters in your aircraft. Right? So we can we'll actually pull that up real quick. So Yeah, that's right. So one of the f uh, outputs of the sole function is going to be this final values, right. and that's going to be a struct, and each element of the struct is one of those design knobs. We have the, one of the design right, variables, right. and what, yes. what its value actually is. Right. So, yeah, I can pull that up in the workspace. I can double-click the struct to see what's inside, and you can see here the value of our different variables. Right. Actually, let me scroll up to that table, and we can you know sort of see which each one of these means. Right, go. and this is sort of giving us information on our design, and I and I, I can also see. So, so I'm 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 trying to think as a as a student team, right? Because again, this is a lot of code to put together. It's a significant amount of effort to put this kind of this kind of a, uh, an example together. Uh, the good thing for y'all is we've already done the hard work for you, so you can just take this and use it as a starting point. But I can also see that you know, say in 2023, when that objective function changes and the constraints change and all that, it's just a matter of going and playing around with those things and then you can get a whole new design by just essentially um uh, it's essentially having code that you've already written so it's it's good it's 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 something that, that i tell student teams all the time is make sure you're keeping track of what you've done in the past because um this thing that someone created say five years ago is if you've got it running with your team you can keep you can keep using it for years to come so um so yeah so uh, hey nice job with the software demonstration i think i think we've I, I've certainly learned a lot of interesting things from you. Um, let's go back into the slides and let's let's wrap this video up. So yeah, let's do some of the takeaways. Uh, I want to highlight a couple of things that I think are important. Uh, the first thing is optimization can really help automate aircraft design, right. right? We saw what the manual process looks like. We saw it, what the optimization looks like and really just takes a couple of minutes once the code is already set up right. for the actual optimization to run. Uh, we also saw how MATLAB offers powerful methods for setting up and solving optimization problems, right? We have, there's a lot of fancy technology actually in the background, right? We're right, solving right. a non-linear optimization problem. Right. Those are not easy That's to do yep. at all. And we did it quickly. We didn't have to worry about those complications. Yeah. You don't have to know anything about optimization to actually get the proper results. Uh, so that's really great. Uh, we saw how the fixed wing object handles aircraft performance and stability analysis. And again, this is really helpful. It has also some fancy methods in the background there that we can get access to without actually having to you know, write right. those algorithms right. and write all those codes. Uh, the next thing is, as you're saying, once the problem is set up, it's easy to modify and really tailor to your application. We're focusing here on model aircraft, but if you're making underwater robots, you can also use the same kind of code right. and the same setup. Right. And so you should be able to get uh, a lot of use out of this. And as you're saying, the code can be reused year after year for new designs. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks a lot for having me, Kano. Really yeah. appreciate it. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time out. Uh, I, before we wrap up, I just want to point you guys to some um, resources that you can use. Um, if you ever have any questions, um, roboticsarena at mathworks.com is a good email address to reach us. Um, someone on our team will, will respond to you. Um, we also have a Facebook group with a large community of people. So please join that group on Facebook. You can post your questions there and the community will answer you. 
don't forget about the software offer. We support a number of competitions. If you go to that link on on the screen, um, you can see if 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 we're supporting a competition that that you're taking part in, we can get you software. If not, just reach out to us and we'll see what we can do. And then we've also got the Student Lounge blog, which is a blog about robots and aerospace and hackathons and deep learning. Um, and it's a blog written for students, sometimes by students. So. Please check us out. We're, I think we're at the end of the video. So, hey, thank you for taking the time out to come and talk to us. Um, and we hope to see you again on another episode.